purpose-driven training, it's simple. It's whatever you are supposed to do in life and whatever you feel, whether it's, you know, relationships, vocation, finance, fitness affects that in some way. And so what we want to do is we want to allow you to have the physical ability to fulfill those roles. Welcome to Becoming Virtuosa, the podcast that encourages you to become your best virtuosa self. Each week, Dr. Susan Crockett goes where the scalpel can't reach, exploring conversations about how to be, heal, love, give, grow, pray, and attune. For the first time ever, she's bringing the personal one-on-one teaching that she shares with individual patients to you on this broader platform, a weekly source of inspiration and encouragement designed to empower you. By evolving ourselves as individuals, we influence and transform the world around us. Please help me welcome board-certified OBGYN specializing in minimally invasive GYN surgery, internationally in the top 1% of all GYN robotic surgeons, a certified life coach, and U.S. News top doctor, your host, Susan A. Crockett, MD. So I'd love to introduce you to my very special guest today. This is Malcolm and Michelle Cook. They are the owners of Livingstone Athletics here in San Antonio, Texas. Yes, they are an adorable married couple, and we are going to have a very special interview today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us. You're yes. welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. So yeah. I know you guys are dying to know why I'm so excited about this. So we're going to start out with a little bit of conversation about how we got to know each other, what they do. But the gist of it is we've had shows for you guys already about eating healthy, about managing our stress, about our money, about all kinds of stuff. But here's the thing that we haven't done yet, exercise and fitness. And these people are gurus. So they are the owners of Livingstone Fitness here in San Antonio, and I'm going to let you guys talk a little bit about your uh, gym and what you do and sure all that. Yeah, yeah tell yeah. us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, I would just like to say that I am very grateful for you. I know this is something that you didn't expect me to say, but <laughs> it is well, it is something that does need to be said. And I told Michelle that I uh, that I wanted to do this, and it's just how you blessed our life, you oh. know. You've definitely helped me in the OR as far as um, being patient with me because we also work in that space together as well. Yeah, so that's we've known each other since 2014 is what we figured out today. Yes. And you've been a surgical tech for me. You were at the beginning of when I was doing robotic surgery. You've seen me from learning curve on through, and you've you know, yes. matured as a surgical tech and part of my team right along the way. Yes. And uh, yeah, so in... Michelle and I have a special relationship, too. Uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit about that more maybe in your interview, yes. because we are going to do, in addition to this group interview, a solo interview with Malcolm and a solo interview with Michelle. Yes. So, yeah, but that's just a little bit of background for you guys. We've known each other for a long time, dear friends. Yeah, and I just wanted to make sure that they, you guys knew how amazing she is. So, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> so... We've talked a lot in the operating room. You know, when we're in the operating room, there's all kinds of conversation that happens. People think it's uh, sometimes like Grey's Anatomy where it's all serious. (laughs) But a lot of life happens there, and we start having conversations about life outside the OR and what's important to us and our families and our lives and our businesses and how we think about things. And I've known about your gym for a long time. I haven't been to your gym. (laughs) That needs to change clearly after today's conversations. But Michelle, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about how your gym has also gone through this maturation process and what it what it would be like now for somebody to come in and where your heart is with all of it. Yeah, definitely. We've always had a love for fitness and movement, and we've seen it in different spaces where we used to have a homeless ministry and we used to bring equipment and it just brought people together. Wow. So we always knew that movement was something that everybody could just be on this equal platform. So when Livingstone came out, it came out of a ministry that we did under the bridge downtown. We just go and feed people wow. and homeless. And wow. we would we would show up and you would see all the different clicks. We would you know, get there with a basketball court bench weights and everybody just came together. And it was just this, this equalness. And so 
Years later, we just were fortunate to start Livingstone Athletics. We didn't start with the name. We started with a group of people that were like, we asked if they would come and join us and see if this would kick off. And it did. And I think our priority has always been people and relationships. I can see that so much (laughs) in our conversations. Yeah. So I always tell people it's, you know, people first and then the sport comes second. I think that when people show up, to do life in a fitness space with community, they're they're going to show up to do that because you know they just they're they're comfortable, they feel safe, and so I think it's just been that common ground for us that we just love people, we love relationships, and we've seen how much movement has not only helped us, um, my mental health, but the stories that we hear of others. I think this is so interesting because a large part of what I've done in my own personal wellness journey has been around food. Mm-hmm. And a big thing that I've learned and we've taught to our audience from some of our other interviewees like Deborah Keston and Larry Sherwitz and their research talks about how it's not just the food itself. It's not the calories in, calories out. It's about the culture around it. It's about Mm. like what we did today where we had a meal and had conversations and shared the stories with each other and got to know each other. And and I've known so much about you guys, but there was so much that I learned in our conversations today, and I didn't really understand how your intentionality about building a community and relationships with people was such a big deal in your gym and your fitness industry. And I think that's where the show, that's the heart of the show, too. And so it's making me know, like, even more on target, I needed y'all to have here. So this, I know this is kind of background story and Mm -hmm. just kind of getting to know this. And we're going to get into more detail on the personal interviews about the actual fitness and supplements and Mm -hmm. menopausal female fitness and all that. But well, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, originally when we started, uh, we were just figuring it out, though. It was more of a hobby that we knew we wanted to be in in that space, right? We wanted to serve people at first, but then people started showing up. You know, we we started experiencing the relationships around us, and that grew on its own. And we just realized, like, whoa, this is this is something that we can actually do, like facilitate a space for people to come in. And to be around people that also want to do the same thing, that'll help encourage them. Our big thing is purpose, Purpose purpose-driven training. That's what we talk a lot about. What do you mean by that? Yeah, purpose-driven training. It's simple. It's whatever you are supposed to do in life, whatever you feel, whether it's, you know, relationships, vocation, finance, fitness affects that in some way. And so what we want to do is we want to allow you to have the physical ability in order to fulfill those roles. And so by having a community behind you, you're able to do that. People that believe in you, people that push you, people that know that, hey, if you show up every day, at least to some capacity, you don't have to show up and do like a two hour long workout. But, you know, it's it's creating the rhythm in your life to help you become healthy. So that way you can I can love my wife and I can do things like that, you know, for many, many years to come and do well. Because you've taken care of the muscle and the fitness of the body so that you're able to do more of the things that your purpose in life is supposed to do. Absolutely, yeah. So I think this is a really great like twist on the whole fitness in- industry. I I know for myself, I, I have barriers to getting into the gym, and you and I have talked about it. And one of them is, as I've gotten older, my recovery takes longer. And so the incentive to go and do a really, really hard hit workout or something, you know, I've got a very physical job and, and I, I'm just like, I don't want to do that at the gym and then be sore trying to do my job and all that. Absolutely. And my experience with gyms has not been anything around community mm-hmm. like this. I know there are pockets of places where that exists, but my experience with fitness and gyms has been pretty solitary, except for just maybe joining a class, um, a fitness class. And But I've never really plugged into a place where people said, hey, this is about making you, the rest of your life healthier and better and, and supporting your purpose like that. So I know this this conversation has started off kind of being, it sounds like an infomercial for your gym, which is <laughs> awesome because your gym is great, but Thank our you. listenership goes a lot wider than that. So I'd like to kind of broaden the yeah. discussion, the kind of like love draws a bigger circle kind of yeah. thing, right? I, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, what do you think that our listeners who aren't in the San Antonio area could do in their own areas or in their own mindset? How can they 
take what you're doing and have a better understanding of fitness so that they're more encouraged to take care of their bodies? That's a great question. I believe it's one of those things where whether it's a running group, whether it's a biking group, you know, because I I just believe relationships are one of the most powerful tools for encouraging you, you know, helping you to show back up. One of the things I, I tell my athletes all the time is I always tell them that you're not only receiving from this group, but you're also giving to it. So just realize that when you show up that, you know, the space of you that you're filling is also giving life to an individual, you know what I mean? Helping them to feel like they're validated and loved and those types of things. And so, um, I mean, it can be, you know, from biking to yoga to, to whatever it might be. And even, you know, smaller groups like, you know, two to three, five people. I I just believe in the gathering as a powerful tool for us that we, because we, you know, we talk a lot about like doing training on the side and stuff like that, but it's really the community of like the people going to that space that's going to be the powerful driver for them to be consistent, you know, and that's really the thing. Yeah, and what I heard you say is that they have some ownership or responsibility in contributing too. It's not just them going and getting absolutely coached or run through a workout. It's they're contributing to the whole process. And yeah. all of that. What a wonderful idea. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I think it makes me think of our Bring a Friend Day. We have that every first Saturday of the month. And we have this sense of community where our members are, and it just happened organically where they're there and they just want to welcome people coming in and they want to serve. It's like that concept of everybody's on the hospitality team, but yeah. they're just like, they're just so great. It's true. Our, yeah. Our actual members with new people coming in, they take ownership on their own. They really, really care about like their space, conveying that to them, you know, and it's, it's just beautiful to watch that. It really is like we, we, we notice it and. It's it's a it's a great thing. So I'm, I'm kind of going to put y'all on the spot because this isn't something that we talked about before. But do you have any stories about people that have come through your gym that just stand out to you as you know this is this is the kind of transformation that we've seen? Or do you have anybody that comes to mind? So I have one person that comes to mind that we have so many, but with this one person that's kind of happening in real time is we have goal settings with athletes and we talk to them and we just kind of really. To me, it's more like it turns into like a little just me holding space for them. We're not even always talking about fitness, but just about life. And so we have this one athlete who has had the life and not one positive experience. And so I asked, you know, what what is that one thing you want to do? That one thing. And this athlete said, I want to get my GED. I just and so we are in the process of doing that with him, like, wow, making sure that he has a right, like it just, it's, it's more than a gym. It just, it's outside of our space. And I think that people, they feel the realness and the love the family and the house. And so yeah. I just love it because it doesn't even have to do with the gym, although it does, because it's the first space where he's felt like he's been seen and just validated in this person, you know, just invested. And we believe in him. I believe in him. And so it's just so cool to see how he's just become so comfortable with with us and and just really, truly believing like I matter, like somebody is truly cheering me on. Well, I think that's really the example that you're setting. Like you're setting a bar for how whatever our purpose is, how we could be interacting Absolutely. as people in this world, right? Mm-hmm. Take care of making people healthier, making them seen and heard, giving them space and a home. I know we talked before, we're all empty nesters, mm-hmm. which I find that really hard to believe. <laughs> Y'all look so young, but that's what fitness does for you, right? Maybe I should start working out more. But what you've done in creating in your purpose, which is a gym, in creating that space where people will drop in and feel like they're family and they're seen and loved and cared for is, you know, I try to do that in my practice too. It's just a different extension. We try to do that here on the show. So I want to encourage our listeners to think about how they can incorporate those kinds of things into whatever their purpose is or their life. What is your, what is your purpose and how can you build that kind of love and relationship into your, uh, your work and what you're called to do here. So. 
I want to thank you guys so much for the interview today. This is really, really fun. Yes, thank you for having us. You're welcome. I wanted to give our listeners a way to plug into you guys on social media because, like I said, a lot of people that are seeing this are in the area, but then a lot are not. So where can they find you? On Instagram, Living Stone. Uh, Facebook, we've got both platforms. And then our website is livingstoneathletics.com. And we will put all of that in the show. It'll all be in the show notes. Y'all don't have to worry about that. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you'll tune in in the following weeks. We're going to have individual interviews with Malcolm and uh, Michelle individually about fitness. And uh, have a wonderful week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to this episode of Becoming Virtuosa. To learn more, come visit us at drcrockett.com. That's drcrockett with two T's dot com. Or find us on YouTube for The Dr. Crockett Show. If you found this episode helpful or think it might help someone else, please like, subscribe, and share. This is how we grow together. Thanks, and I'll see you next week. Love always, Sue.